It gives me great pleasure to introduce our first speaker to the stage, Professor Karen Anstey. Professor Anstey completed her bachelor's degree at the University of Sydney, where she won the Dick Thompson Prize for first place in her honours year and the Australian Psychological Society Prize for best empirical research thesis. She subsequently went on to complete a PhD at the University of Queensland. She studied at Pennsylvania State University and the Max Planck Institute in Germany before taking up an associate professorship at the Australian National University, becoming deputy director of the Centre for Mental Health Research. By 2010, Professor Anstey was director of the Dementia Collaborative Research Centre and by 2012, director of the Centre of Ageing Health and Wellbeing. As of 2018, Professor Anstey is a member of the World Health Organization Guideline Development Group on D Dementia Risk Reduction, and she joined NeuRA as a Senior Principal Research Scientist with over 350 publications under her belt. She now leads an innovative, multidisciplinary team addressing ageing research with a focus on vital lifestyle solutions around dementia for the Australian community. Please join me in welcoming Professor Karen Anstey to the stage. Thank you for that um, introduction. Well, it's, it's great to see everybody here today, especially given the weather, a um, bit of a challenge getting here. And I'm sure we're all here for the same reason. We're all interested in learning how we can age well. And many of us have also been touched by dementia in our own lives as have I. So I'm going to be talking to you about how we can reduce our risk of dementia. But first of all, why is this such an issue now? When we were younger, we didn't hear so much about dementia. We didn't read about it in the paper. Um, we didn't, it wasn't a, a topic of conversation all the time when it's becoming more and more common to hear people discussing dementia. The reason is that Australians are living longer and most people, most dementia occurs in the 70s and 80s. There are people who develop dementia at younger ages as well, but primarily people develop dementia when they're older. And life expectancy, for example, in 1890 for men was 47 and for women was 50, 51, and in 2015 that had increased to 80 for men and 84 for women. And life expectancy continues to increase their life expectancy at birth, so most people live longer than that. So what is the average Australian like as they get older in terms of their health? So only one in 10 of us, so 10% of older Australians actually has no chronic conditions. About half of Australians aged 65 to 74 have five or more chronic conditions. And 70% of adults aged 85 and older have five or more chronic conditions. So whilst we're living longer, we do um, have a burden of chronic conditions that we're living with. And so it's in all of our interest to learn how we can age well and what we can do to reduce our risk of chronic disease and particularly dementia. So dementia increases with age, the, the, the prevalence increases with age. The biggest risk factor for dementia is chronological age, and obviously we can't do anything about that. So about 10% of adults have dementia aged 75 to 85, and 25 to 35% of people who are 85 and older have dementia. Another way of uh, thinking about this is at the age of 70, one in five um, adults actually has a type of cognitive impairment that's not yet dementia. So this is a major public health issue and in terms of medical research we haven't yet cracked um, dementia and treatments for neurodegeneration. At this point, um, I think in my talks I usually have someone pop up their hand and ask me, well what's the difference between dementia and Alzheimer's disease? So dementia is an umbrella term for the gradual impairment in brain function, declines in memory and thinking and sometimes personality changes. It's irreversible, progressive and it's not a normal part of ageing. So dementia is this umbrella term and there are many diseases that cause dementia with Alzheimer's disease being one of those causes of dementia and it's the most common cause of dementia in Australia, causing about 70% of cases of dementia, followed by vascular dementia. 
So what can we do to reduce our risk of dementia and promote our brain health? Today I'm going to talk to you about the ABCDs of brain health and I've listed here some of the key risk factors that are modifiable. So we have risk factors for dementia that are not modifiable, we have age, we have our genetic makeup, but there's a number of things that we can do. And I've divided these, now some are in green and some are in red. Now the red risk factors are our vascular risk factors. So we have high blood pressure, high body weight, so being overweight or obese in middle age, so between the ages of 40 and 60, increases your risk of late life dementia. Interestingly, if you're overweight in older age, it doesn't, that doesn't increase your risk of dementia. So that's particularly a midlife risk factor, as is hypertension. High cholesterol in middle age also increases the risk. So we've got this cluster of vascular risk factors that if they occur in middle age, increase the risk that when you're old, you'll de develop dementia. But we actually find that once people are older, they no longer have that effect. Then we have diabetes and depression, which are also risk factors. And these are all medical risk factors that you need to manage with your GP. And the reason they are risk factors is if you look at this picture here, this shows the blood vessels in the brain. So this is why we say a healthy heart it gives you a healthy brain because anything that affects blood vessels in the body and the heart is going to affect blood vessels in the brain. So we, we need to look after our vascular risk factors. But what I want to focus on today is actually the other risk factors, the ones in green, which are the lifestyle risk factors that you can do something about. So I'm going to start with A, A for alcohol. People like this one. <laughs> Now, the information on alcohol and dementia risk is quite complicated. It actually turns out that when we look at the systematic reviews, all the literature on alcohol and follow, we follow people up and we look at risk factors, we find that people who are light drinkers actually have a reduced risk of dementia. So it's very complicated because we also know that very heavy and problematic drinking causes dementia. So there's a, a, what we call a U-shaped relationship. We also know that drinking, alcohol drinking, is a risk factor for cancer and other medical conditions. So in the end, the advice that we give to people is to follow the Australian government recommendations on safe drinking for alcohol. So the National Health and Medical Research Council of Australia has done um, we've got experts to put together guidelines that look at the level of drinking that prevents harm and they recommend we should drink no more than two alcoholic drinks per day to prevent harm. And binge drinking is also bad for your brain and other health conditions, so they say no more than four drinks on one occasion. A drink, um, when we talk about drinks, um, is, is 100, 10 grams of alcohol. So it's 100 mils of wine. It's just your average glass of wine is one drink. Um, and then with beer, you've got to look at the strength of beer. So it's about one beer is about one drink and one glass of wine is one drink. Following on to A, the next A that we have is activity. So activity is good for your brain and reduces the risk of dementia. So social activity, cognitive activity, physical activity um, is all being shown to, in long-term studies to reduce the risk of dementia. So this was first discovered in a Swedish study. They had a cohort of um, adults that they followed for a number of decades and look at who, looked at who developed dementia. And they found that the people who were very, what we had a, say had a cognitively engaged lifestyle had a reduced risk. And those people did things like um, they went to concerts, they wrote letters to their friends. This was actually before the internet, so now we would be looking at emailing. Uh, they engaged in, in continuing education, so doing courses, um, and, and played music, learned a language. So anything that challenges your brain has been is thought to contribute to your cognitively engaged lifestyle, and that reduces your risk of dementia. The next A for activity is physical activity. And this is probably the most important uh, lifestyle um, change that you could make, make if you're not physically active at the moment. So physical activity uh, does, so exercise, has been shown to reduce your risk of dementia. 
And again, I'm going to talk, tell you about the national guidelines that were put together by the Australian government. Um, and research has shown that people who adhere to national guidelines for physical activity in the systematic reviews actually have a 40% reduced risk of dementia. So keep it simple, follow the national guidelines. Any exercise is better than none. Try to exercise most days. Do some muscle strength training a couple of times a week. Break up sitting. So even if you do a lot of exercise, if you have a sedentary job or a hobby that keeps you seated, you need to break up sitting. And aim for 150 to 300 minutes um, of moderate exercise per week which is something like going for a brisk walk half an hour a day, or most days. So most of us could manage a 30 minute walk every day. If you can't do 30 minutes, two brisk walks for 15 minutes a day, most days, will get you up to meeting the guidelines. If you do vigorous activity, if you run, play tennis, you, can, you don't need to do as many minutes, so it's 75 to 150 minutes per week. Physical activity has so many benefits. Um, it helps you sleep better. It helps you manage your stress better. Um, it gives you more energy. It helps you burn calories, so it helps you manage your weight. It's good for bone and muscle strength and bone health. Uh, Weight-bearing exercise helps your bone density, helps you stay flexible if you're doing things like yoga. It reduces your risk of falls. Physical activity also um, operates on the other risk factors for dementia. So it's one of these win-wins. You really can't go wrong with it. So it's good for um, helping you manage diabetes or reducing your risk of uh, diabetes. Um, it reduces your risk of stroke, hypertension, high cholesterol, heart disease. It's even good for depression and mood. We often, um, it's even used as a treatment for depression and mood problems. So it's really um, got many, many benefits. So if you want to start somewhere, start with physical activity. Okay, now I'm going to talk about diet. Um, diet is something that of course we're all very, very interested in and we hear a lot of advice about diet and we read it in magazines and in the newspaper and there's lots of popular diets. Three, three diets have been looked at in terms of reducing risk of dementia. They are the DASH diet, which is the dietary approaches to stop hypertension. Now that diet is an American diet that's been specifically developed to help manage heart disease, and it's very effective for that. And it involves lots of fruit, vegetables, low-fat dairy, whole grains, and red meat. Um, the Medi diet, Mediterranean diet, is something that's also been shown, it's been shown to reduce risk of dementia. It's very similar to the DASH diet. It involves cereals, it emphasizes olive oil, <coughs> fresh fish and fruits, and it's low in dairy and red meat, and it also includes usually a glass of wine with the main meal. So they're very similar diets. The Medi diet has the wine um, and the olive oil. So some researchers in the United States combine these two diets to come up with a sort of super brain health diet called the MIND diet. So again, it's very similar to the Medi diet. And that um, it really emphasises green leafy vegetables, berries, legumes, nuts and poultry. So it does get a little bit confusing because there's so many diets. I think there are some take home principles about diet. So all of these diets emphasise fruit and vegetables and fresh foods. They all emphasise fish. So of all of the foods, fish is the only single food that's been shown um, in multiple studies to reduce the risk of dementia. So three or more servings of fish a week are associated with reduced risk. Again, I would say let's look at the Australian Healthy Diet Guidelines. In fact, only 4% of Australians stick to the Healthy Diet Guidelines. And these really cover off everything that we're talking about. So the important thing is what not to eat. So it, none of these diets include processed food, salt and sugar. So it's all about eating fresh food. On the left here, plenty of vegetables, legumes, fruit. Now the MIND diet does specify berries. Berries have been thought to be quite neuroprotective and studied quite extensively in animal models. So we do add, we, we identify berries among the fruit as a, as a good food. Whole grains rather than processed food, rather than processed grains. Um, lean meat, fish, as I mentioned, eggs, tofu, nuts. Nuts are very beneficial seeds and then your dairy um, products. <coughs> Finally,
Finally, I want to talk about social um, health and social activity. That's our S in the ABCDs. Our research has also shown that social engagement reduces risk of dementia. And the studies that looked at that, they're long-term cohort studies, they found that people that had four or more social contacts or engagements per week had a reduced risk of dementia compared to uh, people that had fewer. And so social engagement is subjective. It's what you like doing, the sorts of activities. It could be volunteering, it could be seeing friends, family, um, it could be through your work, um, that, that's up to you. But social engagement is very good for the brain and for general health. There's actually been some very interesting research that's been published on loneliness. And in the public health sphere, it's actually been shown that loneliness increases the risk of a number of chronic diseases. And the, the, the effect of loneliness is now viewed as significantly as obesity on health. So we're starting to understand that health involves our social um, engagement. It's not just a biological phenomenon. So I just want to wrap up with some tips for you today. Um, the tips for healthy ageing. Follow your general practitioner advice on managing blood pressure, cholesterol and diabetes and depression. Don't smoke. Limit your alcohol. Be active regularly. Have a healthy diet with fish, berries, leafy greens and nuts. Keep mentally active and enjoy social contact often. Thank you.